We actually knew each other from church, um, but I never really talked to Emmanuel. I would just see him pass by and like be crazy and loud. I hear him all the time. <laughs> um, or like when we went out to uh, like parties that the young adults would host or something, I'd see him there being loud. Um, but I never really talked to Emmanuel. And then just one day... Um, uh, we met, well, I had already known her here at church, but uh, a couple of friends of mine, Jose and Gabriel, were going on a double date. My, they wanted to make a triple date with me. It was uh, after one of those movie Wednesday nights that we had here that they went out to eat, him and uh, like Gabriel and Sarah and some other uh, young adults. And they were gonna go on like a, a double date or quadruple date or something like that. It was a bunch of them. They're gonna go on a group date. And that's when they were like, well, Emmanuel, you should go too. Like you should go with us. I didn't know who at first. And he was like, well, who am I gonna take, you know? And they were like, oh, well, just, just ask Melissa. <laughs> And then, and then Melly was like, no, why don't you ask my sister instead? But then I thought, you know what, what about Rachel? And they were like, ask her, ask her, and I was really nervous. And they kind of like uh, conspired. They're like, no, get Emmanuel to ask Rachel. And that's when he got my phone number from Sarah. Sarah had her number, so she gave it to me and I asked her, hey, you know, um, my friends are going on a double date. I was kind of wondering if you wanted to you know, be my date. And he texted me and said, hey, it's Emmanuel from church. <laughs> it's like, um, do you want to go out on a group date with us? And I was like, okay, Emmanuel from church, I guess I'll go with you. <laughs> I'll go. Pardon me? I'll go. You will? Excellent, all right, this is great. You will, really? I'll go. All right, this is really great. But funny thing is, is I never received her text that night, so I'm like freaking out. I'm thinking, man, I scared her away. She didn't want to go out with me. The next morning, I got her text like really late for some reason, but yeah. She, so we went on our first date, and that's how we kind of started, you know, building up. From there, I thought I was going as a friend date, and I liked him. <laughs> so then what happened after? Yeah, after that, we decided to keep on talking. We went out on another, I think we went out on another double date. So it wasn't until like our third date that we actually went out by ourselves. But I mean, I liked him by then. I remember seeing him afterwards at church and being like all awkward and smiling at each other. And we were just like staying away from each other, but we would look at each other. And yeah. So that was kind of considered your first date. Yeah, our first date. Went? Yeah, we went to. Um... We went to. Um... We went to Pearland. Shogun, I think it's what it's called. It's a Japanese like hibachi kind of uh, restaurant. We went to this smoothie place. Uh, mm. Gabe had known the place. I can't remember what it's called. It's the smoothie place. And then actually, we went to Gabe's house for like a game night. Emmanuel wore this red button-up shirt, and I remember it because he used to wear it a lot. <laughs> uh, a red shirt and jeans. I was wearing um, like a like a brown uh, shirt that had lace on the back and uh, just some jeans and some flats. She was wearing uh, jeans and a. I want to say white shirt off the shoulders, I think. I might be wrong. I think I'm wrong. What's more important? What is his favorite pizza topping? <laughs> simple. He's a simple guy. Pepperoni. Keeps it simple. That's it. <laughs> Pepperoni. Yeah. yeah, simple. <laughs> what is her favorite pizza topping? Pepperoni. My favorite pizza topping is pepperoni and jalapenos. I like to add a little bit on there. All right, um, you think back to the first movie that you guys saw together? I want to say Finding Dory. I think that was our first movie we watched together. 
Yeah, the first movie we saw together was Finding Dory. <laughs> yeah. Okay, would you rather spend a night in with Emmanuel or a night out with him? I would rather spend a night in with Emmanuel for sure. Just get a good movie, get some popcorn, just relax at, at home. Um, I think a night out. I like taking her out and... Yeah, night out. So looking at y'all's personalities, who is the more extrovert and who is the introvert? I'm for sure the introvert. There's no doubt about that. Everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, most the outgoing one, the fun one, the adventurous, dangerous one. I'm more outgoing. Um, uh, like to be loud, like to be funny. No, I am. And she's shy. She doesn't like to be called out, you know, she just kind of like being to herself. I think we had our first kiss on our third date or on our fourth date. It wasn't until, and we had been talking for, there was, those dates were kind of like weeks apart. So I want to say third date. I'm gonna say like two weeks, <laughs> like two or three weeks after that, uh, I asked her to be my girlfriend, and she said yes. And who went in for the first kiss? I no 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 he did, but he's gonna say that I did, but it was Emmanuel. <laughs> it was him. I I leaned in for a kiss, and thankfully she didn't leave me hanging. She gave me a kiss back. wrong about you, Alfalfa. You're not embarrassed by the woman you love. Darla, would you thank me for it if I asked you for a... Um, big wet one? What? A kiss? Okay. <gasps> it was Emmanuel to me. I remember he would, we would talk on the phone and he'd be like, hey, I have to tell you something. And I would kind of feel like, I think he's going to say it. So I'd tell him like, don't tell me over the phone, hold on, wait. And finally, I think uh, around that like fourth date or something, he told me I love you. Yeah, it was pretty quick. And he tries to say that it wasn't. And I have proof, I have videos of him saying it. And I'm like, look at the date. It says it on here. I love you. <laughs> uh, my favorite thing about Emmanuel, I think it would just have to be the his the the person that he is, like the heart that he has. Like on the outside, he's very fun and very unashamed to be himself everybody knows him pretty much like you can see the person that he is but on the inside he's super loving he's super caring like he cares he's very passionate about about certain topics and whatnot and i love that i love the passion that he has for god i love the passion that he has for helping at church and i love that about him the, his personality for sure I think the fact, uh, the fact that she has so much love for music and for God, like, you know, every Sunday or whatever, you know, whatever she is playing, I can just see the passion that comes out of her heart, whether she's singing or playing. I just love that about her. She's so positive. She, no matter what's going on at home or at work, she continues and continues to give passion to God. Mm -hmm. I love that about her. Did y'all have any breakups or any hardships in y'all's relationship where you thought that maybe it wasn't? Emmanuel never let me break up with him. <laughs> I mean, we're so different. Sometimes I would think, oh man, this guy's just, he's out there. I don't know if, I don't know, I'm pretty quiet. And our personalities would clash every now and then. But no, he said. But we never let that, I never put that thought into my head where I'm gonna let this ruin, you know? So I always try to stay positive. You know, 
we're going to keep going. You know, I love you. You love me. We're going to get through it. And we never broke up. We stayed together. So when was the moment that you realized he was the guy for you? The moment that I realized was when he had gotten in his car accident. Um, the pretty bad one that happened, I remember he called me at night and he just said like, I got in a car accident and I'm like, what are you talking about? And uh, he was just out of it, but he called me first before calling anybody. I was uh, in shock of what had happened to me and didn't know what, you know, I'm still trying to figure it out. And I think I was in the hospital for like three nights. And I told my mom, I'm like, Emmanuel was in a car accident. And I was just kind of shocked. I didn't really know what I had to do. I didn't know how bad it was. And my mom was like, okay, let's go. And I was like, okay, let's go. And she, uh, she was there every single night taking care of me. I was in so much pain. My, I, I don't remember what happened, but I felt like I'd broken a couple of ribs. And I kept telling the doctor, you know, something's wrong with me, something's wrong with me, I'm, I'm, it hurts. But she was there, she was there taking care of me, telling me everything's gonna be okay, she prayed for me, she never left my side. And I remember just on the drive over there, just feeling so anxious and so worried because I didn't know what it was gonna be. And then we got there and I saw how bad it was. I saw how bad the truck had been totaled and he was just laying there and the cops were there with him. I just remember thinking, if something had happened, I don't know what I would have done. And I feel like that's the moment that I was like, I don't wanna live life without him. I mean, I realized then that, you know, if it had been worse, I would have been crushed. And I think when I came home, I uh, I talked to myself and God, and I told her, that's somebody that I want in my life, you know, somebody that's gonna care for me like that. And I think that's when I said to myself, I wanna marry this girl. And that was only like two months into dating. And I knew, I was like, no, I'm gonna marry this guy. I'm sorry, Harry. I know it's New Year's Eve. I know you're feeling lonely, but you just can't show up here. Tell me you love me and expect that to make everything all right. It doesn't work this way. Well, how does it work? I don't know, but not this way. How about this way? I love that you get cold when it's 71 degrees out. I love that it takes you an hour and a half to order a sandwich. I love that you get a little crinkle above your nose when you're looking at me like I'm nuts. I love that after I spend a day with you, I can still smell your perfume on my clothes. And I love that you are the last person I want to talk to before I go to sleep at night. And it's not because I'm lonely, and it's not because it's New Year's Eve. I came here tonight because when you realize you want to spend the rest of your life with somebody, you want the rest of your life to start as soon as possible. You see? Just like you, Harry, you say things like that and you make it impossible for me to hate you. And I hate you, Harry. I really hate you. So y'all seem to get along pretty well, but there's no perfect couple, no perfect relationship. So what do you think your first argument disagreement is going to be about once you're married? Our first argument, I feel like will most likely be about cleaning because I'm a really kind of clean, neat person and Emmanuel is the opposite. I think me leaving, you know, when I brush my teeth, there's water all over the place and toothpaste all on the side of the sink. I think that would be a first fight. <laughs> I feel like it's going to be, you know, put those, put that clothes in the laundry basket or clean up your stuff when you're done. I feel like it's probably going to be in that area. Okay, what about family? Are you talking about family in the future? For how many kids do y'all plan on having? Uh, we have talked about it. I think we usually land on three because Emmanuel says um I'd say about three or four and I say four mm -hmm. so then we try to try to compromise like okay three but 
I don't know, because Emmanuel's a pretty bad kid when he was young. <laughs> and I was not. I was always the good kid that sat in church with my parents. So we're just going to have to see how those first kids <laughs> come out. Uh, Rachel, I want to encourage you with this scripture. This scripture has always meant something to me. Uh, it's John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believed in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. Um, but with that, I just want to always let you know that uh, I'm always going to be there for you. And I know you're always going to be there for me, and that's one thing that I've always loved about you. Um, you know, we're married now. I just... <clears throat> uh, I just want you to know that from from this moment on, I'm going to be a loyal husband. I'm going to be the husband that leads us to God. Never let anything put us down. Uh, I'm always going to do my hardest to provide for you to lead our kids to the right direction. And I mean, we're married now. Let's have fun. Let's start our new adventures. I want to travel the world with you. Um, I hope the wedding was amazing for you. I hope that you loved it. I hope that it was the wedding of your dreams. I love you and thank you for everything that you've done for me. Oh, man, I don't even know what to say. I mean, we've been together for four years and it just feels like the time went by so quickly and now it's here, now we're married, now I'm officially Rachel Cortez. It's crazy to me, but there's no one else I could ever imagine spending my life with. You are my best friend. You're the person that's always there for me. And I didn't even realize I could love a person this much, but that's exactly how I feel about you. And I'm so happy it's finally here. We've made it through, we got here and we're married. And I can't wait. I can't wait to live this life with you. And and see what God has for us in the future. So 1 John 4.18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. I'm excited, man, I can't wait to spend the rest of my life with you.